how is it different what we do in addition to the elements, but in a deeper level than the traditional approach? Is I talked about you know, using engineered ecosystems, uh, which I can say it in a little bit different way in, in that, that we developed a deeper level of understanding of these processes. Uh, a traditional uh, activated sludge plant, which has been around for, the technology itself has been around for 100 years, and the industry has developed mathematical formulae to understand what's going on and predict and model. The moment you increase the, on one hand, the number of species, and you put them into distinct ecosystems, the complexity of the whole approach increases dramatically. And what we have done in the past uh, decade, I would say, is to learn, understand, and to, in correlation, to develop the ability to predict uh, how these systems will behave. That's very necessary in order to uh, benefit uh, from the advantages that the, the, the opportunity presents itself. Uh, what you see here is what a traditional approach would be. This is a, a, a relatively uh, widely used modeling of the metabolic processes of a traditional activated sludge system. You can see all the, all the various uh, processes that are, need, to be, uh, need to take place, we need to understand, and uh, need to describe. What we do differently is that in addition to all these processes, we add the higher levels. You know, we talked about that we have higher level of organisms, there's predation uh, taking place, and we are able to uh, understand what's going on and model that. But it's not only you know, between uh, one species and the other, but it also has a spatial aspect. Because remember that fluffy uh, uh, biofilm uh, that we have, the characteristics of the various processes will be different uh, in various uh, layers of that biomass. So it will be very different close to the, the surface into which it, like close to the root surface or the artificial media surface, and will be very different at the other uh, end uh, where it's just uh, really on all sides it's exposed to water. So uh, what you see here is that in addition to the predatory and predation modeling, it also needs to be modeled uh, in terms of uh, space and various layers. And then you do this uh, eventually also in the various, in the series of ecosystems. Uh, as a result, we use very high level of uh, uh, mathematics, uh, dynamic modeling, and uh, as our understanding into the processes uh, increases uh, with the use of more and more powerful computers actually, uh, we are able to actually harness the, uh, the, uh, the advantages more and more. It's very hard to see, but uh, hopefully you can uh, make it out. This is a fairly complicated drawing, which is, uh, when I saw this first, I thought this was a drawing of a microchip. In fact, it's a detail of a drawing that depicts the metabolic processes of a single cell. Uh, the reason I'm showing this because if you can imagine that if you want to understand in an analytical way the working, workings of a single cell, this is how incredibly complicated it gets. The, uh, and it's a very typical uh, sort of expectation, particularly in, in the world of civil engineering, that you really need to analytically understand everything, which is a natural thing. That's how you know, we build the, the culture and civilization that we, that we live in today. Once you get that level of complexity and you imagine that it's, if the workings of a single cell are so complicated, then they organize into organisms and then ecosystems and then series of ec ecosystems, things become much more complicated. And therefore, the expectations of uh, the nature of our understanding needs to change.